Auto Bravado. I know I've shared about O2 sensors before, but I haven't shared enough live data, mostly because I can't catch them misbehaving on camera. Record for 20 minutes and nothing. Well, I've got an O2 sensor that I would call in stage three of death. It misbehaves a lot, and I've been able to catch some good footage for you, so we can have a good discussion on it, all right? Car problems got your head in the sand? Be triumphant. You have a champion to help you. Huzzah! Welcome to the D.E. Nichols channel. Out of the bottom.com. First start up, it runs rich. Actually, there's no reason for you to be tortured with my full engine noise. Now, just a minute ago, in closed loop, I saw a really nice stoichiometric across O2 sensor 1, and I thought, it's going to make a liar out of me. Real nice stoic, right? This completely undoes all my shooting the other day. O2 sensor 1, nice stoic. Rear O2 sensor just sees a slight trace. Oh, I'd never get a P0420 out of this. Um, I tell you, this Bosch sensor, four weeks would not, if it would touch, just touch below 0.45 volts, it would do that, but it wouldn't actually run like this. Now it's still kind of a cold engine, wait for the update. There, C60. Now I do need to give a little tiny tutorial. You're going to see a lot of video with me driving with this O2 sensor misbehaving. This is upstream on a one bank car. This is downstream. Short term and long term. When it swings hard this way, it's a really high short-term fuel trim. When it swings high that way, it's a really bad uh, rich condition or a negative fuel trim. Long-term fuel trims aren't doing a ton. Idle's good. All right, I just turned on my car. As you can see it's revving a lot better than it used to. Still missing that bolt I mentioned in my last video on a new exhaust shield rattle, but hey. See how it instantly believes it's in closed loop? Well, my apologies. If I showed you on the closed loop screen, it would call it in closed loop even though, you know, look at this. 16 degrees of coolant. Last night was even colder. Well, that throttle position was important to me when I was trying to track that problem down. But you would see that it's, my apologies again, I don't have proof to you that it's calling this closed loop the moment I turn on, but it, it does. At least it's showing stoichiometric, almost. It's struggling a little bit, you know, because that sensor's too cold to be called stoic. Here is what I call stage two of sensor death. Okay? 
excuse me, stage one of O2 sensor death is that it occasionally gets stuck. Where, you know, it, it stays really close to a particular value. Fuel trims are changing massively, but it's not doing us any good because it's just incapable of reading good values. I mean, I know my car very well. When it changes its fuel trim, O2 sensors respond. Um, it's just that this O2 sensor has felt. Look at that crazy high short-term fuel trim. tell by the rear O2 sensor on the top right that it's managing to get nice and rich but the upstream O2 sensor doesn't see it because it's it's stuck in this middle range lie the reason why I mentioned stage 3 of O2 sensor death is because Stage two to me is where the sensor occasionally gets uh, stuck. Stage three is where it uh, can go out of the range it's supposed to and stay there. And then stage four is where no matter how much you slap and beat that O2 sensor down with crazy fuel trims, it still won't respond. Now remember, these, these, these issues can be fuel issues, but in this case I know it's the O2 sensor. When I'm into the throttle a little bit or cruising, it tends to do a little better. It has a little bit more reasonable fuel trim. It's when I'm really uh, driving gentle that the O2 sensor doesn't seem to have a read on what's going on because it's getting lazy or um, for whatever reason it's just operating in such a narrow I mean O2 sensor is already narrow band versus a wide band sensor right but this sensor is narrow narrow band um, it, it's almost a trick just to get it to pretend to go up and down like it's stoic notice it can't truly go lean but we know it is lean because of that long trace of lean on the rear O2 sensor. Now my, my favorite annoyance with, with stage one, uh, where it gets stuck a little bit, is if suddenly you have a P0420 just because the rear O2 sensor switches like you saw there, but it manages to get stuck just right where it's switching back and forth constantly, not because it's a bad cat, but because fuel trims are trying to throttle that first O2 sensor and they're doing something that makes sense. still have decent power. You have to really be into it early on for it to, uh, you have to be really into it early on to see uh, the power that's available. If you just hit it last minute, just before you hit a speed, like I sped up quick from 45 to 55, it doesn't show as much power. You have to kind of be on a full speed run for it to have that attitude all the way through. But, you know, th those are normal power levels to me. So, I'm not suspecting any kind of uh, fuel supply issue but keeping it, that, that sensor from going rich. I mean, the sensor goes rich easy, but it won't go lean. So that's part of stage three where you lose part of the usability of your O2 sensor. Uh, stage four is where it's just like your O2 sensor is not plugged in at all. It'll pretend everything's leaning and then the car will go into limp mode. Since it still can get some reaction, the car is not going to go into limp mode as, as long as it thinks it has some use of that O2 sensor. My apologies. Videos like this just make me sick, you know? I mean, the cameraman is doing
doing a terrible job of holding the camera in place while at work. Oh wait, I am the cameraman and I'm driving. Oh well. I keep redefining the four stages O2 sensor death. I do have a good idea about why I've made this up because it is stages that I've seen repeatedly. Uh, I don't know, maybe you guys can help me out a little bit. What causes frequent O2 sensor death? I don't know. Uh, it's driving me crazy that I have to keep replacing them. But you know, my diagnosis is correct. The O2 sensors aren't behaving correctly, and when I put a new one in, they generally behave correctly. This one was a little bit crappy from the get-go. Boshes aren't recommended for my car, but I thought maybe the reason why my car ran on Bosch for nine years was because it was built better. I didn't know back then that it was highly recommended against for Toyota. But I went ahead and risked it. I mean, what did, what did I have to lose? My O2 sensor lasted for nine years. As soon as I tried a Denso, I was ready to have my third O2 sensor in 14 months. And that meant that third one wasn't gonna be on warranty. And I was fed up with it. So I thought, well, Bosch lasted me nine years, let's see. And it gave me problems right out of the get-go. I thought, well, you know, it might be some realer. Uh, at one point, I thought my throttle wasn't responding at the beginning. I thought I even caught that on live data. But since live data is kind of a misnomer, <laughs> it's kind of a joke on on these early pre uh, these early OBD2 cars. I mean, you're not going to get a fast reaction. Okay, I plugged into uh, like a 2010 or 07 Mustang the other day. Help a buddy out identified a few problems with his car and I was like wow that green light just almost stays lit it's it's updated so often while I you always got to wait for the connection on mine um, but anyway I do digress I appreciate you Schrodinger's box I really do but I think I'm gonna disagree with you on one point uh, maybe it's because you work on GM it's more I don't know but I really feel like Toyota, even in 1999, was able to, is able to look at the O2 sensor data more finely than simply a rich lean, rich lean. For example, right now, it's staying above 0.5 volts most of the time, and yet O2 sensor isn't countermounting for us to go lean, lean, lean. So it, it knows it's getting a switch up and down, it just isn't using the range I suppose it should but yeah cruising cars heated up you know it, it stays pretty happy I know things are still a little lean because I'm not getting any richness off my good rear O2 sensor but this car is able to use a switch up and down above 450 millivolts so maybe you can add that to your compendium I should invite you to see this video see what you think. One of the reasons why I believe that this car can use O2 sensor data, it's not properly switching to the quote rich and lean above and below the 450 millivolts, because I've seen it do tests. Like when you have a newer O2 sensor that it's unsure of, even though it's already rich, it'll drive a little richer, a little richer, and kind of trill it and test it. Uh, I usually see that as the PCM saying, hey, you know, is this O2 sensor something I can really trust? And it might do that for a week. It might do that for a shorter period. It depends on how different that O2 sensor is than the last one. I, I truly believe any three good sensors are going to make your car behave a little differently. They're all manufactured a tad different. Uh, doesn't mean any of them are particularly bad. One might be a little better for you or another a little worse. I certainly don't invite you to buy a bunch of O2 sensors and find the perfect one for your car because you're probably going to be wasting your money. But exciting in my first Denso failing in a bad way was that when I put in that new one on warranty, my car instantly was running leaner. I could hear it. Um, I have a pretty open exhaust. Got a good, good cat and everything, but... I have an open exhaust and you can just hear that deep note of it running richer versus leaner. And further confirmation of, of this is I lost 26 uh, W horsepower 
or wheel horsepower. And yeah, that's according to the torque app, which, like I admitted to you, updates pretty slow. But I get really consistent data out of it. And I really miss that 26 horsepower. That's that's enough power that you can feel. You know, the butt dyno knows that you've lost a lot of power here, buddy. Okay? So, oh, i got to pay attention to the speed limit drop here. I'm no longer on freeway. I'm in the city. Kind of on a little bit of a trip. Something that I haven't proven with data. So let's show you, at least by O2 sensor, that I've got a good fuel. Oh, there you go. There's a little bit of State Street death showing there. It, uh, well, it claims it topped out at 0.9, so I misread the graph looking at it from an angle. I thought I might have caught it go out of range, like above one or something. They do that a lot pre-stage for a death where it's about to die completely. But yeah, it was rich real nice and easy when I hit the watt, so no problems with fuel. I got rid of my high idle, but maybe it's just because I wasn't warmed up yet. It's winter, I live in a small town. I mean, it's an improved idle, but it's still high. Side note for you, when my O2 sensor was behaving, that was actually the key, one of the keys to my higher idle. I mean, sometimes I'd have as little as one or two grams per second at idle. That was awesome. Okay. Still wants a bigger short-term fuel turn than expect. Did minus 16 for a moment instead of minus 20. more fuel than it used to. New sensor. Okay, so the rear O2 sensor is actually capable of going rich, unlike the old. That's a good sign because the fact that the rear O2 sensor uh, wouldn't go rich unless I was at like plus 20 short term fuel trim told me that I had a bad situation for sure. Very good fuel trims. It went straight down, it's close to zero. See right there? Long term says it's supposed to be a little bit up, but short term is correcting. And it's going below 0.45 volts. And I finally have a nice rich read on the rear O2 sensor. So I'm gonna drive a little longer, but I probably won't record anymore. This is a confirmed fix. And you know, this O2 sensor, the car isn't even trying to act like it's a relearn. It's just like, okay, well, we have to adjust our fuel trims a bit. But before it was just short term was like Negative, tw negative 20, positive 20, negative 20, positive 20. It was ridiculous. And now it's trying to correct towards zero. So I'll report back later. So you do see it do some stupid spikes in there, but um, I think we've done it. Remember to get out there and work on something. Maybe you have something that's not going down the road that should be able to. Yeah, I'm on the road again. I'm on the road again. Ha, ha, ha.